you can see how the link is established yes. between your citizenship in the kingdom yes. and how you relate to, to, the poor. to the poor. This man could not relate to the poor at a practical level under the request of God, yet had yes. made those bold religious Statement. statements. Yes. So we really need to look into this as we go along in our Christian pilgrimage. Hello once again and welcome back to TBP. We're happy that you could join us again today and we are continuing on our series of studies on managing for the master telecoms and today we're on study number seven which is on which is entitled onto the least of these. Um, before we go any further with this Bible study I will start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again that we can come together and study your word. I pray, Lord, that we will learn more about your will and your desire relating to this topic. I ask these things in your precious and holy name, dear Lord. Amen. Amen. So, um, Pedro, on to the least of these. Um, we've done quite a few studies now within our series on managing for the master, and this is quite an important topic. So I just want to go straight into it, especially for those who don't un actually understand what this topic relates to. So today I wanted to talk about being poor, and I wanted to talk about um, poverty. And my first question relating to um, this topic is, why is there so much poverty in the world and why has it not ended yet? And the reason why I'm asking about ending poverty is because there have been um, programs and like different elements put together in the past in order to 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 end you know world poverty and world hunger and so forth. And none of those have actually come to fruition. So I just wanted to understand why is there so much poverty in the world? This is a very, very, very good point that you're making because it allows me to give an answer that I think you will clearly understand. People have tried to put together programs and set dates. I witnessed that myself yes. by which poverty should end. And the time came and went and things got worse. Yes. Yes. One element that they got right and one element that they got wrong. The element they got right is... Poverty is not the lack of goods and means. No. That they got right and they thought, we've got these things, mm -hmm. therefore it can end. It can be solved, yes. It can be solved. The other element they got wrong is they did not, perhaps, most probably, in fact, I'm sure, considered the fact that this world is a sinful world. Yes. And when sin entered this world, yeah. poverty was part of the package yes. that accompanied sin. Yes. So you see, they understood that poverty can end because it's not the lack of means and goods. No, no, it's not. But what is poverty? Poverty is being deprived yes, of is. both means and goods and that takes a sinful heart yes. are you with me mm. could you read for me john chapter 10 and verse 10 okay so um john 10 10 um and it reads the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy i have come that they might have life and have life to the full you see as long as we are on this earth and the thief is here to still kill and destroy the stealing the killing and the destroying if it doesn't end poverty cannot end because mm -hmm. To sustain poverty, you need the three of them. Mm -hmm. And that's all over um, the news and the Bible. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what creates mm -hmm. this, this, this state of poverty. Now, regarding... Yes, you want to yes, say Yes, I was going to say, and also as well, I think um, poverty is multifactorial. And what I mean by that is that um, there's different... Um, 
there's different manifestations. There's, yeah, but also it. as well, and people are in poverty because of, say, for example, natural disasters that lead to poverty. You've got people who are in poverty because of selfishness and because of individuals who, you know, exploit people that lead to poverty. And you also have countries and nations that in that that like enslave and um, put different. Um, things in place that mean certain countries are in poverty so there's a whole different like you know barrage of reasons why poverty exists in our in our vision by sight and all of that is under steel kill and destroy yes as long as those things exist poverty will be perpetuated mm -hmm. and and here what we're doing is we are going to the main cause as to why because that's what your question is ultimately yes. why does it exist and why has it not ended mm -hmm. we've seen that people have had goodwill yes to end they it. have tried but, but there is some kind of factor mm -hmm. while you're saying it's multifactorial yes it is to some degree but there is one factor that is above all of that mm -hmm. and that is the presence of sin can you read for me John chapter 8, verse 44, please. Okay, um, John chapter 8, verse 44, um, and it reads, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding on to the truth, for there is no such truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Well, I like this um, version, <laughs> his native language, but, but, but to remain closer to, to the original, it, it would be when he speaks lies, it comes from his heart. Right. That's him. Are you with me? So you see, as long as this guy is on this earth, we're talking about the devil. Jesus says, you have for father the devil, and he is a murderer, still kill and destroy. And in relation to what we're discussing, he is the main issue in this universe. Him and his, his followers. fallen angels, yes. And his followers. Yes. Not just angels. Okay. But yes. human beings as yes. well. Yes. And all they do and all they enjoy is to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. That is the state of poverty that results. The, sorry, poverty is results the state that. that results from that. Okay. So, does that therefore mean that there is actually nothing we can do to end poverty? Does that mean that poverty will always exist and people will always suffer because of it? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Yes and no. Your question is a very intelligent question because you said um, in this world, you, you, you added this context in this world. And I'm saying yes and no because while poverty is a result of the active presence of the devil and his enemies, sorry, his friends yes. and his followers <laughs> in, in this, this world, world, we can still tackle poverty. Mm. And not only can we tackle poverty, we can tackle it successfully in order to, to, to manage it to a point that it is not overwhelming on this earth. Because God has given us the means to do that. Um, should you read for me, please, Deuteronomy chapter 15 and, verses, and verse 11. Please. Okay, Deuteronomy um, 15, 11, and it says, There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed towards your brothers and towards the poor and needy in your land. That's Moses talking to the children of Israel. Yes. A children that is supposed to be prosperous, if you, we've, we've spoken about this several times before. And we can read that in the whole book of Deuteronomy. You will be the head and not the tail. Everybody will borrow from you. You will yes. not borrow from anybody. But right here, and in fact, in this chapter, um, if you read there, you will see the, the both sides of poverty and 
um, and riches, if you like, going hand in hand. So here what we learn is there will always be poor people amongst, amongst you. Yes. People who lack means and goods. But remember, poverty is being deprived being actively deprived of both which means both means and goods are at our disposal okay. but somehow we are being deprived that is what maintains yes. poverty okay. therefore if there is no deprivation mm. of goods and means Poverty is being tackled. Yes. Now, I want you to read another text for me from Matthew chapter 26 and verse 11, please. Um, just quickly, just before we go into Matthew 26, 11, I'm um, going back to Deuteronomy. I think it's an important point to point out that when Moses said what we've just read in regards mm -hmm. to that he was talking about God's people. So what I, I think sometimes within Christianity, there's this understanding that if you're a Christian, there is no, there's not going to be any poverty or any poor people this without, is a misunderstanding. Without, within Christianity, that God's going to provide all the needs and all the means for everyone. But Moses was talking to, you know, the children of Israel. He was talking to God's people. Yeah, that means correct. that within Christianity and within people who follow God, there will be individuals who, you know, do experience poverty. That's correct. That's correct. And that's what Jesus is going to tell you. Okay. So Matthew 26 verse, um, Matthew 26 verse 11, and it reads, it says, the poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. Yeah. So in passing in that story, Jesus makes the statement, poor people will always be among you. Yes. Because in this world, as you rightly said, this condition is attached to the sinfulness that we experience. Yes. Still kill and, and destroy. destroy. Another text I want you to read for me. Go back to the Deuteronomy chapter 15. You read last verse 11. Now read for me verse 4, please. Deuteronomy um, 15 um, verse 4 and it reads however there should be no poor among you for in the land of the Lord your God is given you to possess as your inheritance he will richly bless you you see here this is what we need to understand um, poverty must be tackled yes God himself says it it must be while we are saying that poverty will always exist and we heard Jesus saying it, that is the state mm. of our humanness yes it is that creates yes through sin mm -hmm. conditions that bring on um, poverty, poverty. Yes. but God is saying poverty must be Tackled. Mm -hmm. Because you see, behind poverty, there is a spiritual reality. Yes, the text there you read there is talking about blessings. There is a spiritual reality. That spiritual reality is the presence of the enemy of God stealing, killing, and destroying. destroying. Yes. Therefore, God's people must see that reality behind the state of poverty in which many of us are and we need to address it practically yes. in order to make God a reality in this world mm -hmm. where poverty is expressed through the actions of his enemy are you with me yes so I want you to read another text for me talking about acting practically against poverty that is Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 10 please and um, this whole idea of poverty, I think it's really important because um, I think often individuals, especially individuals who don't experience poverty, they don't understand how difficult poverty is for individuals and what poverty leads to. And we know that where there is high poverty, um, there's like crime and like alcohol, alcohol misuse and all sorts of other um, elements that's related to, that's correct. to poverty. That's correct. And all of that has one goal to remove the image of God from humanity. That's why we need to see the spiritual reality behind 
the state of poverty that we can observe yes. in the physical world. That's what we're dealing with. Okay, so um, Leviticus 25 um, verse 10 and it says um, Leviticus 25 10 it says consecrate the fifth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants it shall be a jubilee for you each one of you is to return to his family property and each to his own clan you see, among the, the, the different dispositions that God took with, within the context of Israel, the Israelite context, was a particular thing called the Jubilee, yes. every 50 year. Everyone's situation, everyone's situation, everyone who was in a situation of poverty, had the opportunity to have it reversed. Right. Remember that poverty, actual poverty, is not the lack of goods and means, but it is to be deprived, deprived of, of them. both. Yes. Of them both. So among all the other laws that existed, this jubilee thing was something that we really need to look into. Uh, let's say if your land had gone passed because of your debts to somebody else and that was in all areas but i'm just taking the the land thing why because you do know that livelihood in that context came from the land from the land even now mm -hmm. even now but we tend to uh, not realize that but the livelihood, food, everything came from the land. So if you were dispossessed of your land mm -hmm. forever, what would have happened to you forever and your generations after you? A perpetual state of poverty, poverty. due to that dispossession yes. of land and assets. So God, in his infinite wisdom, said to the children of Israel, you cannot take somebody's land forever. No. That is one of the most, I would say, um, how, how, how would I say this? Mm -hmm. When I look at it, this is the best example I can see about how God wanted his people to effectively mm. tackle poverty, not just for one person, but over generations yes, and generation. centuries mm. through that particular law. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, I want you to read another um, text. I think it's also quite interesting as well that you, that you talked about the disposition of land because if we look at modern days we've got certain countries who whose land has been taken away and whole countries are in poverty because their land and the resources within that land have been taken away and taken to other countries and has left the particular countries in poverty so so what, what it shows is if you want to tackle poverty it's not about just giving people this and that over here and over yes. there it's giving them what belongs to them assets yes i want you to read for me luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19 and when i say giving people assets that means don't deprive them okay so luke 4 18 and 19 Luke 4, 18 and 19, and it reads, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord forever. What is the year of the Lord? Now, that, that's Jesus speaking here. This is taken from Isaiah 61, beginning with verse 1. What Jesus has just read in Luke at the beginning of his ministry officially in the synagogue. And what is he referring to? The acceptable year of the Lord? That's the Jubilee year. Okay. Where all debts would be reversed and those who had been in difficult situation would now re-access mm -hmm. what they needed 
to be rebalanced in their lives in that context. Right. And generations after that would benefit from prosperity because of that. Yes. So what we see here by Jesus choosing this, you remember John 10.10? 10? Can you read it again for me, please? Um, John 10.10, 10, and it says, The thief come only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. You see, again, this is a spiritual reality of the thief yes. that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. When Jesus begins his ministry, he refers to the year of Jubilee, and it says, The time has come for freedom. The year of Jubilee, Jesus uses the year of Jubilee here to tack that was supposed to tackle poverty, poverty over generations as a spiritual motive for his own ministry. Because what he has come to do is to reverse that state of stealing, killing, and, and destroying, destroying by yes. destroying the one who established and maintains yes, the system. The yes. system. Another word, uh, uh, another text I wanted to read for me is Deuteronomy now, 15 still, verses 7, 8, and 10. Um, 7, 8, and 10, and it reads, If there is a poor man among your brothers in any of the towns of the land that the Lord your God has given you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted towards your poor brother. Rather, be open-handed and freely lend him whatever he needs. Mm -hmm. Whatever he needs. So that's 7 and 8 and 10. Yes, please. Give generously to him and do so without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hands to. There is a spiritual reality behind tackling poverty because poverty itself has a great spiritual reality yes. behind it. Those measures that you find in the context of Israel were measures that were supposed to reveal the yes, character was. of God tackling the, the, the thief who steals, kills, and destroy, And that character was eventually, ultimately revealed and expressed mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why when he came, he's, he began his ministry by saying what he said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19 mm -hmm. referring to the jubilee mm -hmm. and also as well this would like reverse the um the result of That's what correct. what all the poverty would um actually bring so in regards to our responsibility as christians relating to the poor and poverty um do christians have a responsibility to address poverty today not only we do have the responsibility because remember there is a spiritual reality behind that and we cannot be revealing the character of God and not address it. Not only should we address it as a responsibility, but we should do it in a sustained way and be successful at it. Right. Can you read for me Matthew 25 verses 34 to 40? It's a long passage, but it's necessary. Matthew 35, 25, 25, 25 34, 34 to 40. 40 please. 34 to okay. 40 and it says then the king will say to those on his right come ye who are blessed by my father take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink I was a stranger and you invited me in I needed clothes and you clothed me I was sick and you looked after me I was in prison and you came to visit me then the righteous will answer him Lord when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink when did we see you a stranger and invited you in or needing clothes and clothe you when did we see you sick and in prison and go to visit you the king will reply I tell you the truth 
whatever you did for one of the least of these brethren of mine, you did it for me. Jesus is very much involved in the yes, issue of is. poverty. Re notice here that he's speaking about making it into the kingdom. He is, definitely. And what, and what does he seem to say? If you're going to make it into that kingdom, yes. if you're going to be admitted in, there needs to be some kind of hard evidence of your Christianity. What? Of you following me and that has to do with how yes. you manage yes. poverty yes are you with me? how we treated people and how you treated the needed yes those. and mm -hmm. the poor yes now quickly I want you to read for me the rest of that in from 41 to 43 then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look, look after me. That's to 43. Salvation is by faith that can be seen in action. And this is what Jesus is yes, it's practical, clearly isn't saying it? here. It's a practical Jesus Christianity. Act, Jesus acted upon his faith when he was on this earth. And he's not expecting anything less than that from us. Another text I want you to read for me uh, as an example is Luke 19 verses 7 to 9. Um, Luke 19, 7 to 9. And it says, All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be with the guest of the sinners. But Zacharias... But Zacharias stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possession to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. You see, when you follow Christ, you actively participate in the freedom and welfare of those in need. That's an example from Zacchaeus here. Yes. Another text I want you to read just, is... Just relating to these texts, Jesus then went on to say in 9, Jesus said unto him, Today salvation has come to, to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. So Jesus approves yes. of that. Now, another text I want you to read for me is Luke 18, 18 to 23. Please. Luke 18, 18 to 23 and it says a certain ruler asked him good teacher what must i do to inherit eternal life why do you call me good jesus answered no one is good except god alone you know the commandments do not commit adultery do not murder do not steal do not give false testimony honor your father and your mother all these things i have kept since i was a boy he said when jesus heard this he said to him you still lack one thing, sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. This young man made bold religious claims as mm. we all do. But when it came to the request of Jesus yes. to actively and practically act upon his claims, yes. the Bible says he was sorrowful and yes. went away, missing the kingdom. Mm rather than and we don't hear anything about what actually happened to him after that you see the, the, your relationship to the poor again in relation to citizenship in the kingdom of god are intricately linked i mean the the the, the relationship is there yes so you can see how the link is established yes. between your citizenship in the kingdom yes and how you relate to, to the poor to the poor this man could not relate to the poor at a practical level under the request of god yet had yes. made those bold that religious statement. statements yes. so we really need to look into this as we go along in our christian pilgrimage our faith is 
very, very much related Linked. to the practical yes. way with which we tackle the problem of poverty on this earth. Yes. Why? Because behind the problem of poverty, there is a spiritual reality tackling the evil one mm -hmm. as servants of God. Mm -hmm. I want you to read another text for me, please. That is Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Okay, um, Matthew 5, Matthew 5, 16, um, and it reads, In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. For the followers of Christ, addressing poverty and doing it successfully is to extend the kingdom of God on this earth and to make it visible yes to all yes that's what we need to do yeah yeah and um our responsibility as christians towards the poor um is really important and it's something that we should never miss and not only that um God, when we read the Bible and when we see what Jesus says, you know, our very salvation, our very admittance into heaven, you know, our very ability to, to be with God in eternity is dependent on how we treat the poor. While knowing that salvation is only by faith, mm -hmm. but faith that can be seen in action. In action. Okay. Thank you so much, Pedro, for that study onto the least of these. And thank you for joining us at The Biblical Perspective. Please don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to The Biblical Perspective YouTube channel. And we upload videos every week to help you in your walk with God. Thank you for joining us today and I'll see you next week for another study with The Biblical Perspective.